Welcome back to Squawk Box, everybody. As the United States prepares for Thanksgiving travel, a number of European countries have been looking at new COVID rules and lockdowns. And those changes led to protests in Vienna, Brussels, Zurich, and Amsterdam this weekend. CNBC's Karen Cho joins us live from London. She's got a full report of the story. And um, this was in a lot of different capitals. Becky, you're right. Dotted right across the map in Europe, there have been problems. But the really epicentre of the health crisis so far is Austria, which has entered its fourth national lockdown due to the current pandemic wave. People have been asked to work from home while all non-essential shops will be closed. According to the Chancellor, Alexander Schellenberg, the lockdown would run for a maximum of 20 days. The question is whether this gets extended, of course. You may recall just last week that Austria declared it would make vaccines mandatory for adults. An extraordinary step. All this as many cities in Europe have been rocked by protests against expanding COVID measures. In Belgium, protesters clashed with police after tens of thousands of people gathered in a march throughout the city centre. Meanwhile, demonstrations continued for a third day in the Netherlands following those violent scenes and dozens of arrests in Rotterdam and The Hague, with thousands more gathering in Amsterdam over the weekend. And in Italy and Rome, large crowds gathered objecting to the enforcement of COVID passes. Just worth noting, though, instead of looking at Europe as one big collective at this stage, economists are just picking out various different countries because of varying vaccination rates. As we talk about Austria being the epicentre of that crisis, there's been a lot of COVID vaccine scepticism. Vaccination rates at about 65.5%. Compare that to Italy, which is close to 74%, and Portugal, one of the highest in the world, at about 86%. So you're seeing various different approaches here. I think in the cold, hard uh, daylight today on Monday, markets are just a little bit more confident about the situation playing out versus Friday, where everybody was bracing for some form of demonstration and uh, rebellion over the Weekend. So I think at this stage, there's just a bit more calm in the markets. Becky? A bit more calm in the markets. I guess, Karen, what, what do you think would potentially motivate this for additional protests on this? What's more likely to happen? If you follow the numbers there, are there more likely to be more lockdowns or more likely to be more protests that, that lead to the point where people say enough is enough? We've got to learn to live with this endemically. Oh, Becky, the big one that we watch really is Germany. What takes place in that country being such a powerhouse of Europe? And there are concerns, and Friday was certainly circling the market, whether the country would go into lockdown. Now, economists think at this stage, uh, really, you'll just look at regions going into lockdown to try and navigate the health crisis. But I think that would be a big one for Europe, but also France, too. And I was just in Paris on Friday talking to the industry minister, and they're hopeful that this time with vaccinations and boosters, a COVID pill from Pfizer, that this will make the difference in the fight against COVID. But of course, the big uh, cities, the big countries, we watch very, very closely. The other point, too, is that we've all had to learn to live with COVID. And that means business, too. So there is some hope that this time around, business can navigate any fresh COVID restrictions. Of course, on the services side, that's where you see the hit when cafes, restaurants, bars have to close down. And already we've seen a lot of European support on the monetary and fiscal side to support these economies. If we start to reverse, then of course, we talk about where the fresh health comes from in this crisis.